Yes, friends, the new Turbo Ginsu. Woohoo! It dices, it slices, and yet makes French fries in three different. Whoops! Mm, kids. <laughs> well, at least, uh, you know, uh, they got one thing right. I do like my pizza. And I, you know, I. You caught me, you caught the tater. Um. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um. Well, anyway. <clears throat> I'm going to make this uh, video basically. It's going to be basically on the aspect of symbolism and how you can tell um, things about the language of people use. Uh, these people that are going around slandering everybody and accusing everybody of being Kabbalists, occultists, Satanists, sons of Cain, whatever. Um, they actually show quite a lot of symbolism in, the, in and of themselves. So I need, I need to make this statement loud and clear. If these people who claim that we need to study the occult, you know, study means actually learn from, basically, you know, in, in a sense, um, to know our enemy, which to a point I can agree with, because we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices, I can understand that. But in, in learning about certain uh, historical events or symbolisms or quotations you might use like from morals and dogma or whatever um, the point is is yeah I, you know I, you know I understand to a point but at the same time do we uh, have to advertise ourselves in a sense of um, promoting <laughs> the occult and there's going to be a you know a, a picture I'm going to show you and if these people so-called study the occult then they should know about the occult and they should know about the symbolisms that are used in the occult which means hidden or uh, secret and uh, this is going to be basically about the uh, protru protrusion or the the protrusion of the tongue you know when you stick your tongue out or whatever and we're gonna kinda go deep into that and what does the scripture say about that um, they've been uh, going around like taking you know notes on everyone's videos who they wanna target and uh, they wanna say look at the subliminals in the background what's in the background what's this what's that who are they affiliated with you know on these types of things is he really this guy is he really that guy Ooh. You know, I mean, all that stuff to me is like hogwash. You know, it doesn't affect me one bit. Um, but if you claim to know so much of the occult or study it or whatever, and um, so what are you trying to tell us by putting pictures of up of yourselves, basically promoting? what you are studying and if you don't know anything about what I'm gonna show you then obviously you must be a liar in broad sense okay so anyways without further ado by the way here's my face you know I mean you've obviously been like going through my videos and stuff like that so I mean <laughs> you know you should know I show my face all the time but for those that, uh, you know, are wondering, yep, this is me, you know, a.k.a. however many names you want to call me, whatever, a.k.a. fat boy, pizza man, pizza guy, you know, but in a sense, this really isn't really a funny um, type of thing I'm going to be going over. So, um, before I close, or not close, but before we get into it, I just want to read to you from Ephesians 6, 10 through 7. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
that, that could be either trickery or beguilement, trickery, deception. Um, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. See, our, our, our battle is not against flesh and blood, folks. It, it, it's, it's not against uh, any physical uh, beings or persons. You know, this is a spiritual battle, period. You know, it's what it is. Um, you know, you can twist and turn that any way you want to, but it is what it is. Um, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Spirit. Hmm. Flesh and, flesh and blood, huh? You know, I don't know. But, uh, also it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty for the pulling down strongholds. And, um, the thing is, is when it comes to our physical enemies, Jesus said that we are to love our enemies, we are to pray for those that, uh, persecute us and these types of things. So my prayers are out for you guys, um. You know, from from what I see, it seems like there's a lot of strong delusion going on, and um, I'm going to get into that a little bit. But I believe this is very dangerous what these people are doing and what they are getting themselves involved with by constantly going after other people. Uh, basically, you know, saying hey, they basically know what's in our hearts and everything, and you know, when we don't even know what's in our own hearts, the us, the individuals, you know, only God knows everything, the intents of the heart, and that's it. So, without further ado, here we go. All right, well, here's what we got here. First, I want to show you a couple pictures, and then we're going to go into the scriptures. This shouldn't take too long, guys. Um, 20, 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes max. I'm going to try to keep it that, you know, at that. And I'm sorry if some of, them, some of you guys don't like to uh, watch long videos, but that's basically how I do it. Anyway... <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. If you look at this picture here, these these are um, uh, these individuals who uh, claim to uh, know the occult and everything like that because they study the occult and you know and they say that you know we need to study the occult to know our enemy and you know and these types of things. And again, at you know to a point, I can understand that. All right, but if it's taking more time away from the Word of God, then that's where it becomes a problem. And also, as like I said, as it says in the Church of Thyatira, that if we just stick in the Word of God, for those that have not known the depths of Satan, and if we are in constant communion with him, be it prayer, um, because we can boldly go to the throne room of grace, um, and just stick with the word of God, we will be fine. Um, we will be fine. At the same time, yes, you know, I do believe that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Okay. So I am, I and of myself know a few things about symbolisms and the certain quotations from different uh, uh, mystical writings, if you will. You know, so because I took a little bit of that step to know my enemy a little further so I won't get caught up in deception so anyways so we're gonna see if they know anything about what they what these people are studying because obviously by this picture here they are promoting something and yes this does have a um, hidden meaning if you will and if they know so much about the occult, then they would know what this means and why are they promoting it. The protrusion of the tongue, okay, obviously is what this is here. We see a lot of people like this. We see a lot of bands promoting it, you know, your hard rock bands like, um, 
like KISS for example, Knights in Satan Service. Here you can see the Ankh right here, the uh, uh, Crescent Moon, um, and these types of things. Which is all basically part of the uh, pagan DT father mother child cult. Basically, that basically is uh, stems from you know Babylon, Tower of Babel, you know Nimrod, all that kind of stuff. Uh, basically, the ancient mystery relig you know religions and everything. So you can clearly see the symbolism here. Here you can see the protrusion of the tongue. I mean, this, this is in all different kinds of cultures. Here you can see, I mean, you can see a lot of these in these gargoyle statues and cathedrals, Gothic cathedrals and these types of things. There you can see the protrusion of the tongue. Now, obviously, this has to have some kind of meaning. Now, also, you can see here, uh, the goddess Kali, or can also be uh, referenced as uh, Shiva, which means destroyer or whatever. And um, the thing is about Kali is um is basically basically the Hindu goddess associated with empowerment Shakti basically the name Kali comes from Kala which means black time death lord of death Shiva since Shiva is called Kala the eternal time Kali his consort also means time or death as in time has come, hence Kali is the goddess of time and change. Although sometimes presented as dark and violent, her earliest incarnation as a figure of annihilator of evil forces still has some influence. And that's basically what those gargoyles are too. They're basically to protect us from the evil spirits and these types of things. That's kind of like the white side of, you know, the, 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 the pentagram of the star pointing up. You know, the white side, the, the white side of the yin and yang you know that kind of stuff they're, they're they're both working on the same side but you know the white side is basically protruding themselves as to be good while you know they're probably serving another agenda you know on the other side of things various Shakta Hindu cosmologies as well as Shakta tantric beliefs worship her as the ultimate reality or Brahman she is also revered as Bhava Tarini, literally redeemer of the universe, comparatively recent devotional movements, largely conceive Kali as a, as a benevolent mother goddess. And we see the same thing with Isis. Isis transformed into Mary, basically, uh, the queen of heaven. You know, Mary is also mentioned as that, so that's also in connection with Isis and stuff like that. So, um, you know, and these types of things. Now, what does this tongue protrusion mean okay well it's linked to flame fire fertility sexual power and spiritual power in nations around the world images of deities or masks with protruding tongues have indicated active and occupying spiritual forces so basically this protruding tongue is basically a magical act kind of like conjuring um uh, certain spells basically for protection such images were vital to pagan rituals invoking demonic spirits as I just stated the sexual spiritual forces represented by gargoyles with protruding tongues which adorn gothic cathedrals were believed to protect the building from other spiritual powers now keep in mind a union of masculine and feminine spirits that is you know according to the secret the occult these these mysteries that is exactly what this is they are in one union they are a married couple and they are promoting just by the pictures they portray of themselves as the same thing they claim to be against um, which is very very deceptive it's very dangerous and um, again I, I it, it's it saddens me. It really, really does. It really does. So, um, with all that said, let's just take a look what the Bible has to say about it. Isaiah 57, 1 through 9. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away. 
No man layeth it to heart. It's like no no one knows. I, I got a news article coming up that I, I'm going to share with you guys that is very telling. I don't know if this could be the start of the fulfillment of Revelation 20, or Matthew 24, 9. Who knows? It might be. He shall enter, but no one is really taken in consideration. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer, and the whore. Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? The tongue in that sense is, uh, can be lashon, basically babbler, bay, evil speaker, language, talker, tongue, wedge. All right. It comes from it. it uh, it's from the root of uh, of this word, which is uh, lashan, which is basically accuse or slander. All right. It's a denominative form from thirty nine fifty six to wag the tongue. That is to culminate, calumniate or accuse and slander. And denominative means uh, that gives a name that confers a distinct appellation or something similar. So basically, this is in strong connection to all these. And that is basically what this is talking about. In Isaiah 57, 4, where it says, Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Okay. Are you not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood, inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree? That's kind of interesting when you to think of Take a look, think about the Christmas trees and their presence under the trees. Slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks, among the smooth stones of the stream, is thy portion. They they are thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these? Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed. Even thither wentest thou up to offer sacrifice. Behind the doors also in the post hast thou set up thy remembrance, for thou hast discovered thyself to another, to another than me, and art gone up. Thou hast enlarged thy bed, and made thee a covenant with them. Thou lovest their bed, where thou sawest it. And thou wentest to the king with ointment, and didst increase thy perfumes, and didst send thy messengers far off. And didst debase thyself even unto hell. Okay. Um, well, obviously, this will portray the male here as king, so who's the queen? <laughs> James 3 5 through 8. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Okay, that's why it's very important to master our tongues and stuff like that. Um, the way we conduct ourselves, the way we speak, and the way we, <laughs> the way we speak God's word. Okay, not twisting it to our own destructions like some people are doing. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Meaning, man cannot change man. It is only by the power of the Holy Spirit, by accepting Christ as Lord and Savior, can that be done. He is the only one that can change you. Isaiah five twenty through twenty one. Woe, which is like woe, like warning. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, which is clearly what I see. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. First Corinthians three eighteen through twenty. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. So all this wisdom that you claim to have, okay, it is not going to amount a lick of beans 
come judgment time. Meaning, it very well could be done in vain. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and again the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children. <sighs> Since these people can't understand the, the, the fruits of the Spirit and the, and the works of spiritual matters, it seems like, because everything just seems physical to them. Let's take a look at adultery. This word here, adultery, it comes from uh, Makalis or Makalis or whatever. And uh, it could be literal or figurative. And obviously this kind of seems like a... Yeah, it could be both, but it seems more of a figurative or metaphorical term here. Adulterous. Adulteresses or, or adulteracy uh, comes from G3432, basically, um, which is moikos, which is a primary word. Paramour, which is figuratively apostate. Now that makes more sense. Adulterer. So this is what they are. Their eyes are full of apostasy and that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls. What is beguiling? Well, beguiling is basically to delude, allure, or beguile, entice. All right, or entrap, or craft. You know, like wile, trickery, witchcraft, deceit, guile, subtlety, subtlety. Okay, trick. It's witchcraft, folks. All right. So let's read this again. Having eyes full of adultery, or apostasy. And that cannot cease from sin, beguiling or tricking them, tricking unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Boser, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass, speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water. You know, and plus, on top of that, the, 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 these people don't have any credibility. He, they're they're going around, you know, it's you know they're going around slandering, and no one's listening to them. As a matter of fact, it, it's it, you know, so that's why we shouldn't be troubled with these people. And I know there's a lot of people that are kind of hurt by them or whatever. I mean, this is a married couple who go who who makes videos. And they basically comment back and forth to each other in their own house. And it's like, you guys are right there. Can't you, like, just talk amongst yourselves? I mean, do you have to continue to write messages? You know, when you're at the same house, or are you? I mean, <laughs> I mean it's ridiculous. It's kind of like in high school where you got to, like, sneak and, like, write notes. So, I mean, something's not right here. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they lure through the lusts of the flesh. Physical. Through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, the same is he brought in bondage. Okay. And I'm going to finish up here with uh, 2 Thessalonians. Remember that one word, it meant to delude. Right here. Okay, delude, delusion. Well, this is what these people are under, and what a lot of people are under. It's not just them. I mean, there is a lot of strong delusion, which God said that he is going to send, or he is sending. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. There's a lot of speculation of who that restrainer could be. Possibly could be Michael the Archangel or the Holy Spirit. I mean, there's... It's a debatable topic. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in 
unrighteousness. These are wolves, folks, plain and simple. Regardless of what they say to me or to whoever they're persecuting, I count it all joy. I count it all joy. It really means that I must be doing something right. You know, um, but at the same time, it's not going to stop me from doing what I'm doing. You know, because, uh, and I'm not saying I'm perfect. You know, I'm only a man. Cursed be the man that trusteth the man who maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from the Lord. The heart is dece deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. Okay. Um, he who trusteth his, in his own heart is a fool. Okay, so we're not supposed to trust in our own hearts. We're not supposed to put our trust in man. I'm only a man, folks. I can fail you. You know, your 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 job is to be in the Word of God. And these people are wolves, trying to devour you. For our adversary, the devil walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And that's just a simple truth. And I pray that they come out of it. But I see a strong delusion in this mess. So, until next time, guys, truth be told, truth be known, stay safe, God bless, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. One more quick thought before I uh, end this, I forgot to mention, but um, I will be, uh, excuse me, I'll be uh, providing links in the description box below of who these people are. I'll provide a link to the video where that, where, where they were shooting pictures of themselves basically or screen captures that they were putting up and um all you gotta do is, is go to the channel and see for yourself um clearly they're not of god um they're they they use scripture and they twist the scriptures to their own destruction um and as far as the concordance goes, I see nothing wrong with using the concordance and these types of things. But if you're going to come at me, I mean, you're, you know, scholarly speaking Greek or Hebrew, is it, you know, doesn't really matter to me. It really doesn't. Or some companion Bible from a ultra dispensationalist, you know, which uh, who was an Anglo-Saxon basically. Um, and, um, somebody that, uh, basically, uh, was also a part of, you know, not so much, but a little bit of that Christian identity type deal, you know, that he was a part of I'm talking about Bollinger and that companion Bible. Um, I could just look at the first chapter of Genesis and see a whole bunch of flaws on it, which I do have. I printed a couple copies of it. Pretty sure that you're probably familiar with that, if you have one. And I noticed some errors in it. And they even twist around the concordance as well. So, um, but again, the uh, uh, all the links will be posted below. And um, go check it out for yourself. All right. All right. God bless everybody. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.